Hello and welcome to Global Insight, where we update you on the latest events around the world. I am Joy Adesua Iramaseli. In the main stories making global headlines right now, prosecutor widen charges against Trump in classified material case. India and Japan look to collaborate in building semiconductors and resilient supply chains. Typhoon Dokusuri batters China with high winds and rains. Tunisia recovered 789 drowned migrants in the first half of 2023. Now let's begin in the US where we see former President Donald Trump facing accusations that he and his aides asked a staffer to delete camera footage at his Florida estate in an effort to obstruct the classified documents investigations. These allegations were made on Thursday in an updated grand jury indictment that adds new charges against Trump. Now a spokesperson for Trump has dismissed the new charges, describing it as nothing more than a continued desperate and flailing attempt by the Biden administration to harass President Trump and those around him and also to influence the 2024 presidential race. The superseding indictment charges Trump with an additional count of willfully retaining national defense information related to the former president and discussing U.S. military plans to attack another country during an interview in July 2021. According to the indictment, Trump returned the document which was marked as top secret and not approved to show to foreign nations. It marks a notable shift in the prosecution's approach to Trump's case, charging him for retaining a sensitive document. It alleges that the president, the former president rather, knew what was knew that the document was highly sensitive after he left after he left and was hovered. Uh, Trump, as however, pleaded not guilty to these charges. Moving on to in India, India and Japan are exploring collaborating in critical technology, including semiconductors and resilient supply chains, as part of plans to reach a target of $35.9 billion Japanese investment in the country by 2027. Foreign Ministers of India and Japan, Kashinka and, and, Hayasha, and Hayashi rather, met in New Delhi on Thursday and also discussed ways to deepen defense equipment and technology cooperation. Hayashi is currently on a two-day visit to the Indian capital. Hayashi and Kashinka also emphasize the crucial role of a strong partnership between India and Japan in ensuring an open and prosperous Indo-Pacific region that is inclusive of rules-based. They also expressed satisfaction that strengthening of defense and security cooperation between the two countries, including regular exercises and talks between all three services. India has made building a chip-making sector a national priority as part of a self-reliance policy to secure stable supplies. India and Japan share strong economic ties and it should be noted that the trade between the two countries was worth $20.57 billion in the fiscal year of 2021 and 2022. Moving on. Moving on to Beijing in China, the typhoon Doksori hit southeastern regions this morning, bringing high winds and battering rains to coastal areas after the deadly storm bypassed Taiwan on its way from the Philippines. According to the Chinese state broadcast CCTV, wind speed of up to 175 kilometers per hour were recorded as the storm reached the coast of the Fujian province around 10 a.m. this morning. Now fears of potential danger to residents and the destruction of property has led the National Weather Observatory 
to renew the most severe red alert in its four-tier system on Friday, as more than 416,000 people in Fujian have been ex evacuated to safe places. Also in the city of Zayama, a major port city on the Taiwan trade, heavy weather appeared to have ripped the roof off a bus station and pushed it up against a nearby sign. Some streets in, this, in the city were blocked with fallen trees, while significant flooding elsewhere impeded passage by vehicles and brought police to the scene. The powerful tycoon Doxori is expected to continue moving in a northwestern direction over central China as its intensity gradually weakens. Local government and transport authorities were advised to take precautions as drainage systems and roads are expected to be impacted by heavy rains. Elsewhere in the Philippines, death toll has risen to 13, with another 21 missing, including four coast, including four coast guard rescuers. This is according to the country's National Disaster Agency. Now on to North, Northern America, Northern Africa rather, 789 bodies of migrants heading to Europe, including 102 Tunisian nationals, were recovered from the sea by Tunisian authorities on Thursday. The number of people rescued by the Coast Guard in the January to July period was four times higher than last year. 34,290 migrants were rescued by Coast Guards this year, compared to 9,217 from last year. The number of rescue operations has also doubled, with 1,310 officials this year, compared to 607 last year. According to Libyan reports, Tunisian authorities deported 1,200 illegal migrants, most from sub-Saharan Africa, including several children, and pregnant women. And that's it on Global Insight today. Many thanks for staying with us. I'm Joy Adesua Eromoselli. Do have an amazing weekend. Thank you.